Barbell Junction. Today we have a special edition, ASMR edition. Today we have, on episode 12, we have two special guests all the way from Penang. Please introduce ourselves, guests. Hey guys, I'm Aaron here. And uh, this is Vincent here, both of us from Penang. And mm. we're from KD Trainer. So we are a personal training company that's based in Penang. Mm. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I think you guys need to do more introduction than that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay. what, what are your backgrounds, um, stuff like that? And how did you get to the point where you are today? Okay, sure. Uh, so I am a engineer by education. Hey, same. Yeah. Nice. Right, man. Whoa. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Nice. This guy as well. Is that engineer? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, they're not. No. We're not Wonderful. engineers. Okay. <laughs> so, you know, the usual typical Asian route. Mm-hmm. So, uh, they cut it for me. So, I decided to pursue my passion in fitness and became a personal trainer. Uh, and after two years, started something called KD Trainer, mm-hmm. uh, where we believe that uh, <coughs> the world would be a better place if everyone were to exercise. Mm-hmm. So that's what we want to share. Wait, how long have you uh, were you an engineer? Uh, let's just say three months. <laughs> three months. <laughs> I lasted three months. Oh uh, man, it's a bit longer. <laughs> how long w- were you uh, an engineer, Vincent? Uh, to be honest, I'm still an engineer. Are you still working? <laughs> so, okay. My last day is actually next week, Tuesday. <laughs> oh, congratulations! <laughs> yes. Thanks. Well, yeah. Welcome. So, so how long have you been with that current job? So, uh, Aaron is three months, so mo- I'm multiply of that, I'm actually three years. Three years? Okay. Oh, you guys are so young. I was an engineer for 18 so, years before uh, I quit and to do this. Mm. So, you guys are not engineers. You <laughs> 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 claim to be. <laughs> yeah. So, um, uh, what got you, what, where did you guys meet? Okay. Uh, uh, how, oh, basically, how did KD training started? Alright, mm. good, good question. Uh, I think. But wait, what, what is KD? What is KD? Uh, okay. Kill that is a question that a lot of people ask us. Okay. Uh, basically, it's just uh, you want the cool story or the boring story. We want the story. Cool and boring. Yeah. Well, I don't know. No, not boring. We definitely don't want. We don't want boring. <laughs> don't want boring. Yeah. Okay, I'll start with the boring one first because mm. that's the truth. Yeah. So back in the day when I uh, decided to start this company yeah uh what we did was the first thing that we got was the website mm, okay? okay and uh people used to call me katie back in the days so mm. just add in another word behind fitness was taken so i had to pick trainer so the web- website was the first thing that we uh, actually did mm. okay right so that's the uh, boring story <coughs> okay so okay. the cool story it is, is really uh, <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the cool story yeah. is I believe it's a representation of all of us that uh, we are different. Mm. Uh, we really want to make a change uh, with exercise and we want to make a change in the personal training scene in the sense that uh, people look at personal trainers not as a dream job. You know, Nobody ever said that uh, when I grow up I want to be a PT. Right? Mm-hmm. So we want to change that with the industry. Like mm. PT is actually a real uh, thing where we can right. do yeah, uh, as a career, a fulfilling career. So where does the KD tie into all that? Uh, I like I said, it's a representation of all of us. Mm. So K- KD means what? Is, is it an abbreviation for yeah, something no, or is just somebody that peop- maybe some people? Maybe you show them the shirt. The shirt. <laughs> oh. oh. Right. Shirt, man. I think oh, there's really? another shirt. Nope. There's <laughs> another shirt that says uh, knowledge and determination. Uh, oh, there you go. There you okay. Go. Uh, okay. Yeah. But w- were you, were you, um, mm, <laughs> were you into sports before you started the business? Okay. Uh, back in the days, uh, I was more of a uh, overall guy, so mm. into sports, but not really like school athlete level mm-hmm. but when I uh, finished studying in the university I did uh, dabble in a bit of uh, bodybuilding competition mm-hmm. uh, oh, wow. not, not bodybuilding I mean uh, what's called physic physic, physic, physic correct, mm. correct, okay. correct, obviously mm. <laughs> right, mm. right and uh, sooner I then transitioned into uh, amateur powerlifting mm. so yeah we did a bit of that yeah he as well okay mm. right. so what's your story Vincent like uh, what, before you joined KD training Oh, uh, so for my story is pretty much very straightforward. 
So everything for me is starting out from powerlifting actually. Mm. So before powerlifting is more to it like a typical kind of gym goers. You're going there without any proper directions. So my first meet was actually in uh, 2016. So mm-hmm. that's where I get exposed to that so, so many athletes and so on. So from that itself, you know, my journey in uh, the fitness and stars and the industry will start to step up. Really. Yeah. Mm. So I actually started out with another company first before with Aaron. Mm. I sort of like working with there as a personal trainer. But uh, sooner or later, I found out that you know, the commercial gyms, the way kind of how they do business, and also even providing the services on PT, is sort, is sort of not to align towards my visions. Mm. Yeah. So this is when uh, Aaron came t- into the picture and also KD trainers. Mm. Okay. So uh, before graduation, you already into fitness. Uh, or, or during the three years. Am I looking? You, am I that young for you? <laughs> I know, how old are you? You want to take a guess? 25. Wow, that's pretty accurate. What about you, Harris? I'm 23 years young. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm actually 26. 26, 26. yeah. Okay. Sort of a senior in a way. So, mm-hmm. so in, the, in the three years, you, you actually <laughs> took your, your certifications wow, or whatever oh for as a PT? Oh, <laughs> uh, actually, I started at the PT first. So uh, before I'm being officially get a client in KD Trainer. So this is mm. where I actually get I my s- international CPT cert. Mm. Okay. So okay. like, um, you guys are pretty much very young. Lah. How did you guys figure out you. that in Penang, <laughs> um, there is, um, there's a missing, there's a missing link for people to do personal training and whatnot. Because, I mean, unless you've been in the industry for a few years, you probably then have a feel of what's out there, right? But mm, okay. you guys are relatively young. So how did you guys discover that, you know, this, there's a gap? Right. So I think, uh, a missing part from my story earlier was I was with a commercial gym for two years. Started off as PT, then became a uh, fitness manager, mm-hmm. and then only I left. Mm. So I saw how it was in the commercial scene. Are you guys from the commercial scene? Uh, actually, I started training at Fitness First, but that was like years. As a trainer ago. or as a no, I just, I just joined. Okay. Yeah, I just joined it. All right, right. Mm. So if it you was cheap, <laughs> <laughs> still cheap. Don't go there. Okay. <laughs> Anyway, uh, <laughs> in the commercial scene, <laughs> in the commercial scene, uh, typically how the business model works is uh, they hire you as a PT, mm-hmm. or uh, they work on a split commission basis, right? Mm. Or, and if they hire you, they'll set a certain target for you to hit. Like this is how much clients you get. This is how much uh, money you should be bringing in mm. from your personal yeah. training clients, yeah. right? So the whole emphasis of the business model as a personal trainer in the commercial scene it's based on the the amount of uh, money clients. You might, exactly mm. yeah. right. they set a budget you should get the budget uh, if you don't hit the budget you're not a good trainer yeah so eventually what happens is uh, this will create a vicious loop where passionate trainers who do not know how to sell themselves uh, get very tired mm. right? although they have good skills they have good knowledge but it's a cycle that is not uh, working for them yeah right <coughs> and and eventually what's going to happen is you if the trainer becomes a, a successful one in terms <coughs> of the commercial scene where, where you actually hit your 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 budgets and things mm-hmm. like that uh you're just going to be a better and better salesperson okay right there is no uh, guideline like okay this is what you should do to, to, to be a good trainer mm. like uh, mm. okay you should so it's more focused on the commercial yeah, exactly. aspect exactly so uh, I think uh, I saw a, a gap that's the gap that I saw like people who are actually passionate in training people sometimes do not get a chance to do that mm. so at KD Trainer it's, it's the other way around Right, the company will handle the the client's uh, mm. acquisition for you, mm-hmm. but you have to prove yourself as a trainer that is capable to deliver results to your client, mm, whatever okay. the results might be. Right, be it losing weight, uh, getting a clean uh, medical report, mm. anything that the client wants, you can deliver. Mm. Mm. Right. Okay. So basically, you guys are trying to um, like. Instead of him, you know, being a salesperson, he's trying to reward reward the trainers for being technically sound. Exactly. Oh, okay, okay. Right. So the trainer, I think, uh, you want to talk a bit about how our training system works. So Vincent here is our training manager. <coughs> he's in charge of all the trainers. 
a game okay. manager is just a title, I would prefer it is more towards on the role. So on uh, how we actually evaluate on our trainers, in, in, instead of looking at the KPI on their sellings, the sales, yeah. monthly sales, and so on, we actually you know evaluate them or criteria that based on the performance mm-hmm. that they given to the client. Mm-hmm. A simple example would be <coughs> results. So is anyone here is also a trainer? Mm. I'm, a, I'm a coach. Yeah, coach. Yeah, I'm not really like I don't really uh, I've never done any of that PT stuff before. Yeah. So, yeah, do you, so how do you evaluate your 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 athletes' results? Then? Depend depending on their goals. Like let's say they they come and they want to get stronger, mm-hmm. right? So that's like a very subjective thing. So depending on how they perceive strong to be, then I'll sort yeah. of apply. Is it the same for you, Aris? Um, I don't have like a specific benchmark that I want to hit, but I just because I'm still uh, only starting the, the coaching thing, so I usually take in and if there's some some sort of progress then I can say hey my, my training system is working mm-hmm. but you know I don't be on that you're bullshitting <laughs> what <laughs> <laughs> you're bullshitting <laughs> you know, like, yeah, yeah it works I mean, see it works for things cause, cause, cause the people that I work with uh, mm. I know them and I've seen how they've not been making any progress for the past few years and these are like experienced lifters mm. and when I when I take them in then they start to see start to make more progress so I think okay so my training system is working yeah so something like that mm-hmm yeah, so for us, it's almost like what uh, Faye, you mentioned just now. It actually depends on your goals. Yeah. But mostly, you can you usually go for the measure way. So it either depends on uh, as simple as they can squat better. Mm. It's considered as part mm. of goal. Instead of looking at the weight or the scale itself, you can be looking on the body percentage or so. There's mm. few criteria mm. we can look at that. Mm. Yeah, so this is how we judge them based on the result. Mm. And, uh, yeah, another part of it is uh, a lot of trainers them being so focusing on getting new clients oh, yeah. that they, f- they, they, they forget the entire primary reason of personal training mm-hmm. which is a longevity thing that you want to bring in result and you want to let them to maintain this yeah. so which is what yeah. we call it over here is actually more to return retention mm. yeah, so mm. the first one is result second one is retention mm. so what's an acceptable result for you guys I would assume that it's not just let's say you want to bring the body fat percentage down not just by 0.5% okay that's a change mm. is it like acceptable for you guys or you guys have like a, uh, an amount that is acceptable so again it's like what Faye mentioned just now it depends mm. and I and I watched few podcasts before the words of depends actually happens a lot when it comes to mm. personal training or even coaching mm. yeah you can't really judge them based on the numbers that they achieve even when it comes to admit itself progress is always the in progress mm-hmm. regardless of how far you've been achieving and so on regardless of how minor it is the progress is always considered as a result or mm. achievement yeah, so other than the first two, which is the result and the retention, we're also looking forward on uh, the professionalism part, mm-hmm. which is uh, a lot of people seem to be forgetting. Mm-hmm. Even though professionalism can be something as very simple as uh, coming in on time, mm-hmm. wearing a proper uniform, or behave properly as mm-hmm. trainers. So does a coach here have mm-hmm. their own criteria for professionalism? Mm-hmm. Like, is there any things that you can do when you're coaching or... When getting a new coach in, this is what you're looking for. Uh, yeah, not 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 yet. I don't think we really think that far yet because like uh, most of us here, we sort of similar. Uh, we share like a similar type of uh, view of training, like how to coach people and whatever, right? Mm-hmm. Um, I don't think we will have an issue with that in the future, just because I don't know. Like we just attract whatever that yeah. we are anyway. Yeah, I think that uh, makes sense because mm-hmm. I think uh, the client pool for each. Uh, a job is different like mm. for a personal trainer we are more towards the general population yeah, yeah, yeah. so the yeah. wider audience yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. I was thinking the same because these guys are very specific into okay. weightlifting mm. and powerlifting exactly so, so I think the um, the matrix that they look at is different from what you guys are looking mm. at exactly and the clients that we get also are very different very different yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. yeah. some yeah. are too different but um. yeah so <laughs> with, with myself the clients that I personally have um, I'm, I'm a bit selective with, with who I work with mm. so I can get I can sort of bring that professionalism with them because that actually works better. Because you connect because, with them. Mm. Yeah, and then they buy into my, my coaching and then they make more progress. Mm. Is that why we're not getting more <laughs> clients? I think so. Because <laughs> you're being picky? Yeah. Because of the location. Yeah, no. Maybe. Uh, but yeah, I would imagine with the general pop, you'd have to, you know, set some barriers and stuff like that so they don't overstep you or whatever. And mm. exactly. But I think that's a great strategy because... Uh, if you keep on getting clients who do not uh, meet your expectations, you, you're going to be very disappointed as a trainer. Yeah. But, but I think it's also uh, tied closely to your business model, right? Correct. Yeah. Right, because we are not just uh, a gym, we sell equipments. 
mm-hmm. and we do podcast and we do a lot of other things okay. so probably if you are just solely a personal training center then you would have to do some compromise uh, yeah. you know you cannot be so selective or else it will hurt your right, yeah. business mm-hmm. yeah. Exactly. yeah so Haris here has a bit of a leeway still <laughs> <laughs> in picking his <laughs> clients a lot right. yeah. <laughs> that's cool that's cool, yeah. I, think that's cool. That's one way I, I want to go back just a little bit uh, so you, you started as a website Mm-hmm. And is that a fitness website? I assume it's a fitness website, right? <coughs> Or is just any other website? Okay, uh, in its inception, obviously when I was not as uh, uh, into the business yet, mm-hmm. so you will see things like you know half naked guys with muscles popping out. Ah. So that's the usual perception. Why of guys? Why why not girls? Because I'm a guy. <laughs> <laughs> the, the guy in the picture is okay. me. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. So he's oh, right. a half. Okay, okay. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 Girls would have worked better yeah. though. But anyway, uh, yeah. So when yeah. it started, it it was all about that because that's the general norm of, of mm. when people say fitness, it's it's muscle. Yeah, that, that is yeah, what that's, that's what's defined as healthy. Right, but now now it's a bit different. If you yeah, go to fat our guys, <laughs> <laughs> fat guys on the page. We just saw it. What? Now, if you go on to our website, it's a lot to do with the client. So it's a client-centric uh, website. So mm, when uh, okay, a, a potential good. client go yeah. to on, uh, go on our website, uh, they get to see what they get uh, to experience in our place. Mm, yeah. Okay. Right. So so the focus is on on the client's mm-hmm. face, then the trainer's face will get the okay. right. because it's all about them. At oh, the yeah, end of, of the day. Yeah. At the end of the day. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah, all about I, them. Yeah. Actually, I wanted to. Uh, I was talking to Harris before about this. I think I want to bring this up one day in a video or something. That too many people who coach currently in Malaysia, whether it's for weightlifting, powerlifting, or PT stuff, they always focus too much on making it about themselves, right? When that's not the point. Right? The point is you're out there to help other people get to their goals, right? Now you cannot, you can never use yourself as an example, right? Because you have to show that these people are getting results under you, and then people will believe it, right? Compared to just being like, oh yeah, but look, it worked for me. So yeah, if it doesn't work for you, then you probably did something wrong. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I really disagree with that. It's just probably you are not listening to your clients properly enough, <coughs> right? To get them to wherever they want to be. Correct. Yeah. So I think that's good. That's a good thing to do. Like emphasize the clients, and because they feel that value, and they don't feel like it's just part of some random thing. Just because you look good, they're listening to you, which is how a lot of people sell their stuff here, mm-hmm. right? That's really annoying. Mm. So so now with the website, you have um, half naked pictures of your clients. I just got that. <laughs> oh, you can't find out. <laughs> Were you waiting this whole time? <laughs> <laughs> It's a good I one. I do it before you, but I know. Okay. <laughs> so, okay, so you started out as a website. Uh, when did you guys, <laughs> uh, I mean, like the whole history of, of KD Train. Mm-hmm. After that, then when did you guys get um, your... The growth? Yeah, the, your, your own place and mm. things like that. Okay. How did that happen? Uh, okay, so after the website got done, and then the next step was to actually get real clients, right? Mm-hmm. So we started off uh, with another uh, guy named Nizam, mm-hmm. not here today, mm-hmm. right? Uh, shout out to Nizam back home. Mm. <laughs> hey Nizam, hi. hi. <laughs> what do you think? Uh, okay, so uh, what we did was we were basically acting as a freelance trainer, mm. but in our mind, it's already we. We know where we want to go. We want to set a. We want to become a company, right? When we you say we, who's we? Me and Nizam. Back okay. In the day. You guys are partners. Uh, it, I'm the founder. He's the founding member. Okay. Okay. So we were uh, basically going around Penang, right? Like, like uh, clients' uh, apartments, mm. uh, parks, mm-hmm. uh, renting other people's place to mm. do training over there, mm. and then after a while. Uh, Vincent came on the team, right? And then it just grew and grew and grew. And after a year, uh, we got enough money to build a place of our own. So mm. one thing about KD Trainer, it's until today, it's completely bootstrapped, right? Mm. Means we have zero uh, capital from the start. Mm. Everything is from blood, sweat, and tears. Mm. And yeah, the momentum just kept on going. And today we are twelve <coughs> men strong mm. and women. Wow. Mm. Uh, 12 trainers or you have sales staff uh, admin uh, staff 12, uh, 11 trainers to be exact one admin staff 11 mm. uh, yeah. that's quite huge yeah so mm, go ahead and the one who's doing the management is just you Vincent and Nizam uh, yeah there's two more 
uh, so we are the basically the leadership team oh, in, in, yeah. so they have their own uh, we call it VR, functions yeah. yeah functions like accountable for each function mm. so he's more for the training side and then sales we have someone marketing with someone but the, so so the the guy who does sales is also a trainer it's also yeah pt she's a girl yeah. and yes she's a trainer as well mm. oh okay but but wouldn't that like uh, contrary to what you guys believe in like you know the trainer is supposed to just worry about training and not sales i, I would assume that you would have a separate sales team who are not trainers okay uh, the reason why she is a trainer is because uh, we believe in the uh, in the beginning that everybody should be a trainer first when mm. they come in the company so it's actually a company that is built for trainers mm. by trainers okay so the level of relatability mm. it's it's very high that's smart we know what's going on we can empathize and when things mm. go wrong and yeah so she is a trainer and but we are looking to that uh, path as well like the future uh, we call them relationship managers in st- mm. I, I was mm. always trying to strive away from that money factor mm-hmm. right because uh, it should always be about the client mm. right so uh, yeah we are looking into that in the future so <coughs> how big is the space that you have you guys have, or do you guys still do house calls and uh, things like uh, that no we completely stopped uh, house calls because it's just too time consuming okay. right because you have to go yeah that's three hours traveling training yeah, yeah. coming back we just rather do it uh, on site yeah i mean our site yeah so in 2017 we got a thousand square foot place mm-hmm. together with an off small office okay so it was 800 200 and just uh, at the beginning of this year we got another place so that's another thousand square feet mm. oh you have two locations uh they are kind of side by side side by side okay yeah it's sort of an expansion or rather so than basically about 2200 square feet lah. roughly all right and and all 11 uh, PTs that you have uh, uh, good looking atten- attending to <laughs> clients half right naked. Uh, <laughs> half naked and good They're looking so <laughs> all 11 of them are training attending. people yes yes uh, and we have a few more coming on board as well mm. how many can you fit like you have 11 people in the size of this place mm-hmm. because our place is about 2200 How do you how do you fit everybody? This is why you never fit. You keep on growing. <laughs> yeah. So, you guys have any space issues? We right do. Now? We do have an internal system where we control the traffic. Okay. Mm. So at any one given slot or time, uh, there will be no more than three people that can train. Mm. So that mm. keeps the quality of the sessions high. Okay. Okay. So your um, clients per trainer is actually very low. Clients. Per trainer is actually it depends. Some can take more, some can take less. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because if you schedule it three at a time, mm-hmm. you have eleven trainers. Correct. Right. So it will be low, right? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> on on the average, engineering part. <laughs> Good. I I'll just give you the numbers right yeah. away. On average, uh, you'll be about five to ten clients per trainer. Five to ten clients. Yes. Mm. Wow. Active ones. Mm. So that's like fifty-five uh, per day. Uh, oh, not per day. Not per day. Just per month. No, not per month as well. Per day we per get about <laughs> per hour, twenty to thirty sessions per day. Per day, twenty to thirty sessions. About twenty, right? It, it, that's a lot. Yeah. Mm. On mm. weekends, it's a bit less. And you open up until uh, Sunday, or you close every, on Sunday? We open every day. Ooh. Wow. Mm. Uh, so you cycle your. Okay, I understand. Mm, makes sense, no? Mm. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so we're actually operating on an appointment basis instead okay. of our opening hour, like how we yeah. typical gyms they work. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. because it is one to one. Yes, it's one to one. You day. don't do any group classes. Uh, just a little bit. You can neglect that. Okay. Mm. <coughs> so the the gym is not like a like an open gym for other people to come in and walk in. It's so it's more specific for that. Yeah, it's, it's more to as a personal training studio mm. instead of a okay. commercial gym or mm. even a gym. What sort of um, equipment do you guys have in the gym? Like what sort of yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, actually Aaron did consult here before he actually bought in the equipment. Mm. So what our gym have is almost similar to what you guys have here. It's just barbells and dumbbells. Mm. Okay. Okay. So the main Dumb focus bells. is always on uh, functional, is what I love to call okay. it. Mm. But we believe that uh, you know, with such a minimum listed equipment, it will be sufficient for a client. Oh yeah, okay. of course. Yeah. You do a lot of stuff with a barbell. Yeah, mm. I think we run a very s- 
fundamental strength training programs mm. for all of our clients. Mm. Because it, it would seem so because you have um, you don't have, do you have like machines. plyometrics and you, um, agility um, uh, we, stuff. If 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 our market is the general population, they don't need that. They just need plain old squats, deadlifts, wow, bench press, this kind of stuff. Ah, uh, we can learn something from them. Yeah, because that's the foundation of any mm. uh, uh, healthy mm-hmm. human body. So what what does a typical program look looks like? Uh, uh, this depends on the client. Right. Typical. Typical. So if uh, you want to start it out, it's more to it. Uh, it's actually based on adaptations of uh, ACE IFT models. Mm-hmm. So the IFT models is almost the same as how how weight lifting coaching or so powerlifting coaching does it work. It's mm-hmm. always come back to the stability and mobility first mm-hmm. as the foundations, and from there, if they are able to overcome whatever they're unstable of, of they were lacking of, then they're going to be slowly progressing on. Mm-hmm. But in the meantime, stability and mobility is always there. Mm-hmm. It's just like typical kind of uh, how coaching do that works. Mm-hmm. We just apply it to our client, mm-hmm. which is a lot of trainers they neglect it, mm-hmm. maybe because they don't understand it. But over yeah. here, that yeah. is our foundations. Mm-hmm. Regardless of uh, how long they've been versed, some clients they've been versed for almost more than two years, mm-hmm. but they still be working on that very, very basic kind of movement mm-hmm. when it comes to that stability. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so this is how we roll when it comes to a programming. Okay. So how long how long is a typical uh, program for someone? Like, <coughs> I'm sure you if you, you can set different goals, right? Mm-hmm. Is it everybody is different? Blah, blah, it all depends, right? But ultimately, you still have to have a program for for that person. So usually, a program lasts for how long? Okay, so we run on mesocycles, mm-hmm. right? So a typical general population client will be about a month. A month, a four-week program. A four-week program, okay. And then after mm-hmm. that, what happens? A renewal. Okay, so so how much? So mo- a new program. Yeah, so that's the retention that you're talking about. Mm-hmm. So how, what's the percentage of your retention? Your retention rate. Mm-hmm. So uh, you want to answer this one? Because he knows the number better than me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, wouldn't be too specific, but overall is uh, above eighty percent. Well, mm-hmm. that's good. That's very yeah. good. And uh, we strongly believe that people stay is not because of result. Is that obviously is part yeah. of it. But most of the time they stay is because of the people actually. All right. Mm-hmm. You're not just a personal trainer, it could be among clients, mm-hmm. that community that you actually created on. Mm-hmm. You can mm-hmm. see in the powerlifting scenes or even weightlifting scenes. Yeah, mm-hmm. the powerlifting yes. scene especially, right? The community is very good. <laughs> yes, the bond is always very strong. <coughs> <nice. coughs> Unbreakable. <laughs> oh my god, you guys. The family. Uh. Yeah, but well, one thing that I want to add on is I think what he said uh, is very true is the people, right? Not only mm-hmm. amongst uh, clients but mm-hmm. also the culture that our team has mm-hmm. right? so one strong strong differentiator that I believe we have <coughs> is our internal culture our work environment yeah that is important for mm-hmm. any business extremely so yeah. when they step in the room they get to feel the, the positivity the, the kind of uh, ambiance that our our passion brings mm-hmm. right going back to the retention um, mm. I mean eventually you want somebody to graduate okay right uh, yeah, I'm or, or tired of you. Yeah. <laughs> so, what was how? Uh, what is the longest? Who is the? Lo- I mean, not who. How, the how long uh, does uh, someone? Uh, okay, so we have like two opinions on this matter. My English sucks. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's good. I think we have two opinions on this matter. Mm. Right. Number one is we believe that clients would be better off with us than without us. Period. Mm-hmm. Right. No matter how good you get, you'll always be better with a trainer. Yeah. Right, no matter how good of an athlete you are, with a trainer you will be better. Okay, mm-hmm. that's Watch. what we believe. Yeah, in. Okay, Watch, yeah. right. And and next, the second opinion that uh, we have is also that uh, not only uh, do we want to help them achieve results, but we also want them to gain independence. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We don't want them to be too reliant on us. Okay, mm-hmm. because that that sometimes will create a misunderstanding. Yeah. Right? So. Uh, so what's the question again? Stuff. Like who's I mean longest, What's the longest okay. Yeah someone uh, has stayed Some with of you our clients Have still Are still with us Until today Since mm. day one what, Day one is when? Three years ago Oh that's mm. good That's mm. very good Yeah he, he is also training One of the earliest clients mm. Yeah we have Some of them Now how do you Okay See um, mm. After three years uh, mm. You probably dispense All the knowledge That you have To this particular client Right So how uh, I, I would disagree on that and I guess all the coaches would disagree on this mm. because as all the coaches strongly believe that you know, learning is something yeah. unavailable, mm. you will keep, it, keep on going and improving. Yeah. So 
it's not going to stop. Yeah. You know, I strongly believe that the the day one since I'm training my mm-hmm. day one client until two years later on, it's somehow it's going to be different and it's going to be improved. Yeah. It's always changing. It's always a different. Yeah. So I think that my question is actually, how do you guys keep yourself? What do you guys do to update to, yourself? To keep the knowledge. Yeah. Mm. I think Because uh, I'm not I'm not a coach, so I don't know. Okay. <laughs> uh, how we It's life coach. Uh, to be honest, I have already stopped training clients as well. So mm. um, yeah, focus on management. Yeah, yeah, more towards the business. But uh, <coughs> what I would say is to find ways to keep it uh, fresh, fresh in the sense that, you know, let's say client uh, John, or mm. whoever, or Mark, or Mark in 2016 it's going to be a different mark in 2017 mm-hmm. yeah. and mark in 2017 might have a kid in 2018 yep yeah and in 2018 he might get a new position in in, in his work mm-hmm. so different kind of challenges that is going to happen and it's going to be a different individual that you're training okay so you you're saying that the the clients have different goals at a different point of time yes right either yeah but either different goals or like different Types of training that you have to give them because you need to take into account Adaptation. the stress. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> the stress that they go through. And yeah, mm-hmm. not only physically but mentally <coughs> as well, right? Because mm. different phases in life will give you different challenges. Yeah. So, so, so basically, you guys prescribe the these clients like every four weeks, mm-hmm. or do you guys have longer um, programs once you have you know once you retain them? So uh, usually we always go for the four weeks manner. So because the reason why four weeks is because after every four weeks we actually have a, we call it a reassessment. Mm. So it's almost the same thing like how coach they try it out, which is they ask the, the athlete to try the max and so on. But mm. when it comes to this, we actually more do it on assessment. Okay, so mm. how do you do the assessment? What what do you look at? Uh, you want to cover that? Okay, sure. Uh, assessments. We look at a couple of things. Uh, for example, just body composition, simple stuff. Uh, movement screening. You have the, this machines, ah. Uh, yeah, in, yeah, in, yeah. In body. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Not motorbike. <laughs> <laughs> you have a motorbike. <laughs> you have that. Yeah, we do have that. Damn, yeah. that's expensive, body yo. Fat analysis. Uh, right, that's machine. expensive machine, right? Yeah, it's a bit pricey, but mm. not the in body one. The in body one's too. It's like five figures. Oh, you sure. oh you have the one that's two hundred ringgit one, the Omron one. one. Ah, not two hundred, but. Yeah, ours is what is yeah, ours two to three hundred ringgit. It's from there. right, but we have a uh, it's 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 connected it to the mobile map. phone. Ah, uh, <laughs> right. okay, yeah, okay, okay. Mm-hmm. yeah, something like that. So body yeah. composition, movement Seriously. screening, strength, okay. uh, muscular endurance, things that would uh, make the person physically uh, better. Mm. Mm. Uh, are okay. your are your uh, clients more um, the? Can I check out? Athletes or more like? Normal. No, nah, it's just normal people, like uh, regular, regular people who really need uh, help. Oh. Mm. Yeah, like uh, I would, I would say most of our clients have never stepped in a gym before. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. okay. Have you ever had uh, like somebody who's doing powerlifting, for example, or uh, athletes? Or we do get, but it's a low percentage, mm. right? Because they are not the kind of clients that would pay for. Uh, mm. uh, coaching, coaching yeah. cheap. I yeah. hear you guys. <laughs> yeah. I wouldn't know because we don't market ourselves that way as well, right? Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, how do you guys market yourself, and how do you do marketing and sales? That's something that I want to learn. Okay, cool. Uh, <laughs> marketing and sales. So, uh, marketing, we strongly believe in giving uh, upfront value, right? So, if you go to our our, our social media site, mm-hmm. we are always dishing out content that would help the yep. average Joe. Mm-hmm. Right, every single day we have something up, right? Yep. Mm. Just giving without expecting anything back. Mm. But uh, this is a long-term strategy, right? You gotta wait a lot of years until it will reap you mm. uh, the the ROI that you right. want to get. And uh, from that kind of uh, content, we actually do generate uh, clients that have uh, shown interest. Mm. And then from there, uh, it'll be taken over by our sales. Uh, Uh, person, and then she will do her thing, mm-hmm. and yeah, it's a cycle that goes like that. Okay. So apart from social media, do you guys have any other sales tools or marketing tools that you or channels that you use? Yeah, the flyers and stuff like that. Uh, we used to back in the days, but it's just not as effective. If you understand the power of social media. You're not going to waste your time with flying. By the way, Haris, if you're thinking of not doing it, uh, no, 
I know. That's, <laughs> that's what I was no, thinking. Yeah, too. no. I, he's I still doing it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Playing <laughs> 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 on flyers. He's, yeah, he's, he's, he's going to go out and uh, send out flyers. So cool. Hey, kid, I want to get strong. <laughs> <laughs> Old school, but still works. Yeah. Still works. Yeah. Right. Like, how big is your social media following right now? Uh, following we don't really look at followers we have never been seeing we prefer to look at the engagement rate oh mm. so that means you you put out an ad uh, on uh, uh, Instagram do, or Facebook we don't really do ads yet uh, because uh, it is something we don't really know how to do wait mm. then how do you market we market <laughs> you, don't, you don't use flyers you don't use ads then how do you market like I said we do organic content meaning meaning oh, the Facebook uh, so YouTube yes Oh, okay. So simple tips that will help people, uh, videos, uh, short clips that would. Uh, wow. Yeah. So and it has been going on for three years. That's mm. incredible. And people, uh, you know, that find us, uh, you know, if we make sense to them, then they will hit us up. Mm. Okay. Yeah. It's, you mean that they, they you you leave a contact number in your YouTube channels? I we assume. don't. We don't at all. How we do they reach you? Out, out, if they want to, they can go to our inbox. Ah, okay. uh, or they All Google right. our phone number and they call us up. Like how many how many queries do you get in a month? Like roughly, wow. through that. Uh, okay, so you're talking about leads, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, as of now, we get about sixty to eighty per month. Per month. That's fantastic, yeah. bro. Yeah, but of course, it takes took three years to get to that number. Yeah, mm-hmm. but still, now you 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 have a a funnel. We do have uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. self generating already. In a way, in a way, but. It is not scalable. Organic mm. growth is still super slow. It's gonna yeah. take many many years. But then again, you have uh, capacity, right? In terms of space, in terms of your trainers as well. That's why, like Vincent said earlier, we want to have the capacity, but we want to grow as well. Yeah. Mm. Right. So yeah. that has always been our aim. We have we have uh, pipelines that we want to achieve this much trainers, yeah. this much clients. So right. We do want to mm. have that growth always happening, right? If you're but not how big do you guys want to get in terms of square feet? Because you've expanded from 1,000 to 2,000, mm-hmm. right? Is there another store next to that <laughs> that you can expand to? Uh, because eventually you would have to move. Like this one. Yes. So, <laughs> <laughs> that's a good idea. But uh, I think we will uh, grow until to a certain point and then we will change the location. Because location is also <coughs> a big factor. But currently, you're, it, it seems to me that... Um, uh, the current location that you're in mm-hmm. and um, the amount of uh, leads that you're generating and of course I'm assuming the sales uh, is also quite okay mm-hmm. like even at 10% you're, you're getting about 6 to 7 mm. you know conversion rate yeah. yeah and your retention if you say it's 80% then that's you're, you're, you're going to reach your capacity very very fast of course I'm sure you have your churn rates and whatnot, mm-hmm. whatnot mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. so you're doing pretty well in the location that you, ha- you are, you are. Uh, right. I mean, so far it's it's going well, so yeah. So and like uh, the the customers that you have, the clients that you have right now, mm-hmm. are they nearby? Because Penang is okay. You know, it's like so congested, right? Mm. Yeah, yeah. You mm. are right. That's, That's why I say location is a factor. But we do have clients coming over from from the mainland. They mm-hmm. truly believe in the value that we are providing. Mm-hmm. So therefore, they don't from the mainland from the from mainland. Sebrang Prai. Yes, uh, they, take from that, they take. They oh, take. I'm from I'm Malaysian, lah, brother. Oh, okay. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> I've been in Malaysia since I was six. Uh, yeah. I don't know. Wait. <laughs> so, so they cross the bridge every single time. Yeah, we have wow. clients coming from Kedah as well. Mm. Sungai Petani is in Kedah, right? Wait, where, where's where's your yeah, your where's facility? We are located in the heart of Bayan Baru. Bayan Baru. Mm. Bayan so Lepas. the second bridge, kind of near to the airport. Okay. Uh, oh, oh. <laughs> that one I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually in between of the first bridge and the second bridge. Okay. Okay. Uh, so in between. Oh. Okay. Wow, that's amazing. Is it more like an industrial area or is it near um, offices and also it, housing? It is actually in, it's an industrial, industrial area, area, right? Yeah. I think it's a mix of both. A lot of housing there, a lot of high rise buildings. But mm-hmm. your customers are from those areas? Majority. Uh, majority, I would say yes. Oh. Mm. Mm. And they just. Okay, either they, they walk past your shop or. They saw you on YouTube? Or uh, we rarely get walk-ins. We rarely get walk-ins. Mm. Guys! Guys. <laughs> we have a lot of things to do. <laughs> Three years daily content. Yeah, I'm sure you wow. get the same thing. Wow. <laughs> That's amazing, bro. Yeah. Seriously. Uh, it's, a, it's a long, long journey. Mm. And we are already set in mind that it's going to be a long journey. So. Mm. Yeah, it's going to be a long journey as well. Mm-hmm. I know. 
been, it's been four but months we, compared we to three years. We are looking into paid advertisements now, though. That, yeah. that, that's a bit of uh, you can't really control organic growth, right? right. It happens as it wish, and yeah. things like like a recession will slow it down. You cannot have control over that, right? Mm. But with paid advertising, you can have control over that. So maybe this year we'll try to learn a bit more about that. But but you still can't control the um, the organic part because it's still ongoing, yeah. right? So you, if once you do paid advertising, <coughs> you probably be getting a, a, a bigger funnel. Yeah, right. Exactly. Probably lower retention that, rate too. Though. That's hmm? the goal. Probably lower retention rate. Yeah, too. for sure, because the more you have, the more, yeah, yeah. more randoms. Reta- re- retention rate or retention uh, rate, yeah. conversion? No retention rate. Like you actually get them, but then they're like, ah, oh, it's um, not for me. Do you screen your customers, yeah. like Harris does? Screen, <laughs> as in, like <laughs> you know, because you're getting <laughs> so you, you're getting so many, right? Oh, uh, as of now, we do not do that, right? We try our best to provide as much value as possible, mm. and if they find us valuable, we definitely. We want to service them, mm. Mm. serve them. Sorry, service. <laughs> <laughs> this is not that kind of show. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. so by by organic growth, do you mean like uh, if you build it, there will come approach as opposed to the like hard selling? Yeah, yeah. So organic growth can be that, and it's also like word of mouth, right? When when some of clients get results, they'll tell people. Yeah. So it's mm-hmm. things like that that happen. So I get. I'm sorry. So you have like this, you know, this have principles. You can try as hard as possible to not sell out. Is that what I mean by like organic growth? Like for example, if you you know you have, you have the business model and business identity, mm-hmm. and then you're trying to like, okay, this is who we are. We don't want to sell out. To, you know. You mean like doing yoga <laughs> <laughs> or Zumba? Yeah, yeah. So, so you mean like we only stick to personal training? Oh, um, sell out. Whatever business vision that you had in the mm-hmm. beginning. That you're not tempted to okay maybe this is not working we have to do more something you know, else something like a more something appeals, appeals, more. appeals more to them so, so what Harry say or regarding on sell out is more towards like forcing yourself to promoting ourselves uh, is it uh, what you're talking or about something that does not align with your you know principles uh, or okay no I think initially I think our principles our vision uh, it's, it's set in stone since day one mm. uh, we believe that to in order to, like I said earlier, we believe in a world that uh, where people exercise, it's mm-hmm. going to be in a much better place for mm-hmm. anyone. And, and we cater more towards the general population. So I think of people like our parents, maybe, mm-hmm. right? So you can understand that, you know, it's hard to get them to exercise, right? Mm-hmm. But if they do get it, you know it's good for them. Mm-hmm. right? And so that has always been there since day one. And we also believe that personal training is the best way to help them. Mm-hmm. Not group class, not... Uh, Yoga. I mean, we're not choosing, but we believe that personal training. Oh, no, you're not choosing, but you're knocking them down. I'm not knocking. <laughs> them yeah. down. So, so, so you never once felt like, okay, then maybe this isn't working. Look, let's do yoga. That'll bring the money in. No. No, it's personal training since day one. Like, um, um, how long did it take for you guys to uh, get to the point where you're <coughs> comfortable? You know, with what you're with, with with your direction and things like that. Okay, uh, I think we have culture that uh, we are never comfortable. We want to always keep on pushing the barrier. Like we actually do have uh, a vision of going around the world. We want to be a international brand, mm. right? We want to be a global brand, right? It's even in our office. It's it's there in picture. Mm. Mm-hmm. So it's always been that. So there is. I don't. No, think okay, we're ever see, I guess. I guess my question. Uh, this is where I'm coming from. Uh, mm-hmm. Because when you start out, you start out as freelancing, mm-hmm. right? So you get um, you get the 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 money from from your clients directly to your pocket, mm-hmm. right? No, uh, there is a separate company account since day one as well. Okay, so so yeah, you guys get the money and then you put it in the in 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 the business, mm-hmm. right? right? So, um, I'm assuming the reason you are able to get to this point is that because you had low overheads. Can I say that because you still need to pay yourself? So without any facilities, how much money were you making uh, individually, and h- were you able to? Sus- I'm sure you. Uh, it's obvious that you sustain yourself, lah. Mm. But there, there has to be a point of time where you you say like, oh, I need to make such and such mm. in order for me to do that and that. Yeah, and to 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 grow and things like that. So at which point where you could say you 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 said that, okay, now I think it's time for us to grow. Now we can do this and now we can do that. Instead of like what Harris was uh, referring to, like 
um, you reach a point where alamak tak cukup duit then you have to think about something else right. did that ever happen mm. with I you think, guys okay so uh, from day one as well <coughs> I treated myself as an employee so I get paid the same way they get paid everyone else gets paid yeah. in the company so we, everything that we earn the profits always goes back to the company so we want to uh, keep on growing right so and that has been happening since day one so there is no okay it's always profitable mm. what i mean so, so then, is your yeah. question is on uh, when will we get comfortable with this no because uh, from from uh, from our point of view mm-hmm. from from what we are experiencing right now mm-hmm. because we started out with a with certain vision right mm-hmm. um and probably because of the location because location is important yes. whenever whenever you um Correct. sell something like expensive like elico yeah and uh, we we've had to reevaluate even though it's it's been just a quarter or four or five months yeah. in you know so I, w- i wanted to know whether you had the same i think that's what you're alluding to right yes. whether you had the same yeah. uh, experience struggle. because okay. yeah the same struggle yes. because when uh, it's you know yes yeah, so, so in the beginning we had the weightlifting classes and the powerlifting classes in our you know with the vision that we had was we wanted to make like an academy and we bring in kids and we you know we train them and they can compete internationally whatever but then we sl- quickly realized that it was dying and slow and eventual death mm. So we had to change the business model. Yeah. And so now we're doing this. Okay. So has that ever happened to you guys? All right. I think I got your question now. I'm digging the, the <coughs> Batman voice, by the way. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's Bane. Bane, Batman. Okay. Uh, so to answer your question, I think uh, after we have profited uh, and then we come into a comfortable place as in we are comfortable enough to invest in a new place mm-hmm. and then and only then do we make that decision right well i, I guess Haris, i think because they serve a, a wider a wider audience, uh, audience right because okay. ours is so specific so, and yeah. um yeah maybe, maybe yeah that's and the probably the market difference. is not not ready okay, and things sure. like technically, that technically uh. people that would pay for personal training is very niche ready so but if you look at even coaching more specific, it's even yeah, more specific, more specific, yeah. specific yeah. just like teaching swimming mm. Mm. but swimming could be better than coaching okay. so like do you guys have competitors uh, in, uh, in and around Penang <coughs> competitors as in who, who does the same thing business uh, I would say they are definitely personal trainers around commercial gyms there are plenty mm-hmm. Uh, uh, training studios there are a couple of few but obviously not as much as in KL mm. right so that's going to be a, an exciting challenge for us we do have plans to come to KL one day and you know it's a whole new journey for us okay so so basically you are probably the only one uh, doing what you're doing in Penang would you say that uh, because the one if forget about those who are from uh, all these uh, commercial gyms right because that's not the model that you are uh, operating on okay right uh, if, so if if you are comparing model to model then I guess you would find something more similar in KL yeah mm. like mm. only focusing on a very niche thing like personal training right okay that's cool mm-hmm. mm. um, I was just curious because mm-hmm. um, What you're doing is kind of a, a luxury, I guess, for people, right? So what happens when you know the economy is bad and people, are, you know, don't wanna, are not will, as willing to spend on this thing? Is that ever, if you ever taken that into account? Uh, I think definitely because uh, recession, it's not a recession-proof uh, model, right? Like when if, if a recession happens, then you get uh, priorities change in, yeah. in financial decisions, right? Mm. Definitely exercise is going to be slashed off the list. Mm-hmm. But I believe that the kind of clients that uh, we train uh, will not really be affected by, by... Oh, because they're rich? Exactly. They are at the higher end of the... Because oh, okay. these are you're talking about people who can afford like, you know, a thousand mm-hmm. bucks a month kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, which, which brings me to my next question. Are you able to share your, the, your fees? Our fees? Yeah. Uh, sure. Uh, our most popular, actually, our programs they they run on a system where we offer rewards, mm. right? So it really depends on the behavior mm-hmm. of the client. So let's say if they are uh, they are adhering to our programs very well, then they do get more rewards. 
or yeah. something like that. Uh, what, what sort of rewards? Our uh, monetary rewards. Okay, so like meaning cheaper. Something like that. Yeah, cheaper programs or longer programs. Mm. Yep. So. What's the value? The rate. <laughs> what that is it? That's what mm. I want to know. Is it a secret? No, it's not really a yeah. secret. But uh, how much? Depends on who's watching. Hmm? No, our oh. our most. Uh, okay. We have a lot. Of you don't have to say it if it's if it's tiered or you know specific to uh, a particular uh, client. No, no, I think it's fine. Okay. Because it's standard with our clients. We don't do discounts and things like that. We okay. don't believe in that. We mm. believe in what we, we provide the mm. value since day one. Okay. Right. So our uh, most common program or the best, the most popular, I would say, will be eight sessions for one one nine nine. One one nine nine. I cannot calculate. It's eight sessions. Right? It's eight sessions. More than one hundred ringgit. That's one hundred. Oh wow. Now like how do you how do you split the the fees with your uh, trainers okay, so or do they just get a salary? No. So how we work is on also a team basis model. So it's everything that uh, happens in in KD Trainer is a team effort, right? So whenever a client comes in, uh, the salesperson gets something. This person gets something. The person that runs the assessment gets something. The training gets something. So it's always a teamwork to deliver a single result. Mm-hmm. It is all of us, not right. just one person. So is, are you saying that's that's commission based or is it uh, session based? I would say session based. Session based commission. Yeah. Ah okay. All right. So commission commission lah for so just just that everybody has a cut. Yes. 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 Cool. It's split. Ah, that's cool. Mm. So are your trainers happy working there? Uh, any uh, grumbles? I don't think I can answer that. Mm. I mm. Would, would like to think so. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe he can answer this. Uh, yes, for now, I guess I'm happy. If I'm getting subsidized for the trip, I'm going to be even more happy. Yeah. <laughs> oh, wow, that's on record now. Yeah, yeah. done. That's yeah. cool. That's no, right. I think I think we 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 really have one thing that's really interesting. I think I mentioned this earlier. Is is really our internal culture. Mm. We are people who truly uh, enjoy what we do. We wake up feeling driven to train people to do what we don't even feel like it's work. I mean, mm-hmm. I'm not the only one to say this, but a lot of us say the same thing. Mm-hmm. Like something that uh, is very shocking to people is we don't have working hours. So that's that's something that work. meaning meaning that we trust you to do whatever you want to do, mm-hmm. right? So if yeah. there's a client, you come. If there's a certain responsibility, oh, because it's by appointment. By appointment. Oh, okay. But also, even in your day-to-day thing, mm. like 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 the business part of it, it's it's very it's a culture where we really trust each other and we are always happy with with uh, mm. each other's company. But yeah. mm. it's, it's just like in Zilfit. Are you guys actually working now? This mm. is work. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's hard. Work. It doesn't seem like work from yeah. our point. Yeah. Mm. It's, it's surprisingly that you know Harris can actually talk back to Asmi and you. Mm. So this yeah. is how culture That's actually works. Yes, man. Mm. Yeah, why do you talk back yeah. to me, man? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If this is a commercial kind of business and so on, I don't, I don't think so. Such a relationship would be existed. Uh, right. Okay. Yeah. So I think, I think that should though. I, I think, I think that should. There should be more communication between the people higher up and the people below. Because if you're high up in that position, right, you can only see so much. You don't actually see what's happening on the lower mm-hmm. uh, ground perspective, right? So you need to speak to the people who are working under you, regardless of their level. Uh, I think a lot of this here, especially, I don't know why, but it seems like in Malaysia there's a very big ego thing going on. Like on this position, so you have to listen to me, right? Like I probably know more than you, so maybe you should fucking listen to me instead. Beep, right? beep. <laughs> Calm down, man. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> but but that's my point. <clears throat> people here they need to learn how to communicate. Then things will be better. Stop being so like full of yourself. Like yeah, I'm up here. That's it. Do you know what I mean? Like all of them. This applies to any type of gym, uh, whether it's for powerlifting, CrossFit, commercial gyms, whatever. Mm-hmm. They should learn how to communicate with the people who work under them, and they will get more money. As simple as that. Wow. Right. If you want people to listen to you, I hope you should not talking to about me. <laughs> 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 yeah. I'll snap your itch. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. Uh, interesting. Yeah, like communicate. Point. Just communicate. It's so simple. Just yeah, talk. That's you, it. Yeah. Grumpy old man. You don't so, agree and disagree. So yeah. have you ever, uh, you know, stuck in a position where the communication is just stopped when it comes to it? Your employer listen to you? Uh, never actually. It's probably because I don't really put myself in a position where that will happen. Oh, right? you're getting and, a raise now. It's the people that <laughs> you're pushing it. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's 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 sort of like. Um, I surround myself with people with the same mindset so we can actually make a difference compared to wasting time like having a little 
internal struggle over nothing. Yeah, so I've never really had that. But if I was, I would leave. And yeah, it's it's not worth it. But a uh, good point because mm. I believe that that is the job of the leader mm. to make or to create an environment that is safe enough for people to voice up. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah right. Yeah. So that is very important. It's mm. I think it's the duty of the leaders to make yeah. that that environment very uh, conducive for Thank people you, to be able. Yeah, yeah. To you're welcome. Because with. someone might have a one million yeah. dollar yeah. idea. Exactly. But they're afraid to tell you because you're going to be like, oh no, that's yeah. stupid. So if if they have that 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 feeling of security that I can say whatever I want, yeah. I mean not whatever, but you know professionally. Yeah, and, in in the setting. Yeah. 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 So. That's a good good environment mm. to be in. I yeah, but with. but this guy make these guys make fun of me sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> well, only because you make fun of us. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's it's mutual. Reciprocated. It's, it's mutual. Yeah, but it's <laughs> that three against one. Uh, it's good. <laughs> I think nah, but means yeah, they I'm, love you. No, nah, I'm I'm cool. I mean I'm, I'm an I easy boss. Far. Yeah, <laughs> but but that's true, right? right? Like that's what mm. brothers and sisters do, and mm. I believe in any team environment, it should be like that. Yeah, like a team of brothers and sisters mm. working together yeah. towards a certain yeah. goal. But if it's work, then it's work. Then you get it done. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but, well, uh, once that's over, it's fine. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think we have. Can we take a break? Take a break. Yep. We have to take a break. Sure. Uh, we've exceeded the limit of the camera. Okay. Uh, all right. Uh, <laughs> we'll be back in a couple of minutes. Assalamualaikum. Hi, it's me again. This is probably our last video for Ramadan. And I want to just go through the different barbells that we have currently in stock. First, we have the performance weightlifting bar, both in 20 kg and 15 kg. And the next one is we have the XF bar 20 kg. Now, let me just go through the difference between the performance weightlifting and also the XF bar. The performance weightlifting has sharper knurlings than the XF bar and it's identifiable by a single marker right here. The XF bar has two markers, one for powerlifting, one for uh, weightlifting. In terms of uh, the bearings, performance weightlifting has uh, needle bearings. The XF bar has both needle and also bush. For a beginner, you can just start off with XF bar, regardless if you are into weightlifting or CrossFit or whatever. But if, as you go, as you progress uh, as a weightlifter, this is the bar that we would recommend, the performance weightlifting bar. So, if you want to try them out, come over to Zilfit. We are in Space U8, Bukit Jelutong. The Ramadan promotion is still on until Hari Raya. So, take this opportunity and get all the barbells at a very, very discounted price. See you soon. Bye. And we're back with guests Aaron and Vincent from KD Trainer Penang. So, um, I guess just now we, we got a lot into the business side of, of things. And I want to ask about, because um, you guys say that you guys are unique, different, right? Um, so I just want to know, apart from the, you know, you splitting the, the sales and marketing, from the trainers, what are the things that set you aside from a, a typical commercial gym, I guess, in, in terms of the quality of the, of the training or maybe the knowledge? Because in my head, what I'm thinking is that a lot of trainers who train, they usually don't actually know stuff like the science and, and stuff like yeah. that. Okay. So what about those kind of aspects that you guys have? All right, cool. Uh, I, have, I want to whisper as well. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. I don't think it'll be as good as mine though, so fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, what makes us different is we actually focus on the clients like we said earlier. Mm-hmm. So we actually have a dedicated system for every single that comes in KD Trainer. Like you won't never ever get uh, two similar programs ever because everyone's different. And, and our system has been always been updating since day one, right? Uh, we have so many layers of, of, of things that the, the clients go through to ensure that the results and their happiness is always kept at a certain level, which is, I think, why our retention rate is, is, is at where mm. it is now. Mm-hmm. Right? And we also have uh, one of our values, our core values is we, we never stop learning, right? So if you go to a commercial gym, typically the weekly meeting about Hey, how many calls have you made this week? How many clients have you, right? But in our scene, it's, hey, uh, how's your client doing? Uh, we call this client review sessions, right? And we also have uh, 
what's called an internal development program training mm. kind of thing. So, do you have tests for your <laughs> trainers? Uh, yeah, I think we should. We should. <laughs> is, I guess a, that's a very good idea. Is the passing mark 100 also? Oh, uh, is this from <laughs> the <laughs> another <laughs> podcast? I guess yeah. I guess I heard that before. Yeah, but we do have a very uh, strict hiring process. Yeah. yeah, you can call it a very strict hiring process. Like you need to know your stuff. Uh, before I mean scientifically and also mm. practically mm-hmm. right so theoretical practical obviously practical a little bit more yeah. because you're dealing with humans every single day yeah. right so do you actually care about the person do mm-hmm. you know how to do proper exercises before teaching them to to, to another person right and mm-hmm. the theoretical factor is also another like certifications are a thing in our place yeah. and like I said the weekly training that we do is all about the sciences the latest science in, in, in the fitness world mm. Do you get that from just reading or you you guys attend uh, classes, courses? Uh, okay, uh, so fitness-wise, I'm a certified personal trainer and also a half uh, CSCS. Yes. Mm-hmm. So CSCS is a mm. certified strength and conditioning specialist. Mm-hmm. But that's more towards training. But it's also uh, one form of, of my education. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then internally training, just Google, man. Mm. Mm-hmm. Google is 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 gonna be the next education, I believe. Like, mm. like yeah. you won't be as fast as Google when it comes to courses, or you know, you're just mm-hmm. gonna be faster. Mm-hmm. And everything that we research, we we do, we always share with each other, and and every single week we talk about mm. it, we discuss about it. Yeah. So we emphasize a lot on 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 learning, mm. right? So we don't talk about like oh, how many clients are we. That the lead. That's the leader's job, right? To make yeah. sure the retention rate is good. But but the, the the on the battlefield, it's are you getting results for your clients? Mm. Is your client happy? Right. So things like that uh, we emphasize on when yeah. it comes to the front line. And other than clients' happiness, of course, trainers' ha- happiness have to come first as well. Yeah. So the development program is not just on a very very technical or very kind of dry mm. kind of mm. lecture thing. It's more to it on the fun and engaging. Mm-hmm. So like the first uh, like the previous few weeks, we actually have debates and so on. Yeah. It's very very interesting. You know we. It depends on things like uh, should we even stretch or not. Mm. So so things like this actually we could do that right now. You're gonna oppose. You're gonna oppose. It depends. It depends. <laughs> <coughs> but yeah. Right. Yeah. So okay. to add on that, to answer your question a bit more is like what he said. Like the team is is comes first, right? The internal culture is super important to us, and and the trainer's happiness is is definitely a, has a strong correlation to the client's happiness. Mm. Right, so we do have things like uh, we make it a point to have dinner with each other once mm. a week, the full team. Cool. Every single month, we do something together. Like mm. like yeah. last month, we had some treasure hunt thing going on just internally in the office, having mm. some fun. Mm-hmm. Uh, this month, we're going to get some bowling together. Simple stuff like this, movie nights, you know. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So that really helps with, with uh, making a difference when it comes to team uh, Dynamics. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. Right. And we're all very different in the sense that there's so many uh, different backgrounds. Like we have uh, people who are engineers, obviously. Mm. Uh, we have lawyers, we have teachers, we have a lot of different backgrounds in our place who gave up what the norm would normally do, the mm. normal society. So all of them are full time? Uh, Except <coughs> for you? No, there is seven full timers. Wow. Eight. Yeah, eight soon. Mm. Mm. Next week, eight. Cool. <laughs> oh, yeah. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> I think he took a big leap of faith as well. And I strongly believe that I cannot speak for him, but it's I believe a strong part of it, it's the internal team culture. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I guess it's, it's better for you to do it when you're young than when you're older. Right? So what are you doing? Hmm? <laughs> what are you doing? I'm doing Zilfit. Uh, what so he's t- saying he's still young. Yeah, no, I'm old. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Harry, you wanted to ask something. Yeah, I guess what I meant was that um, so it seemed like this this business you have is fueled by like everything that the commercial gym is. I mean, so you wanna you wanna be not. You know what I mean? You wanna go the opposite direction. You wanna fill in where the holes are. So um, I guess what I mean is that if if you were to if you were to say hey. Actually, we have something that you know works. So, people who use code commercial gyms, do you try to sell yourself from that point of view, or okay? Uh, I think they know these people are frustrated with commercial gyms and say, "No way, 
actually we have the answer so come to us do you do, do that kind of marketing uh, not really we do not believe in comparing ourselves with anyone mm-hmm. but uh, yeah, I think what you said was uh, important because what we saw in the commercial gym was a sign that this is what we should not do mm-hmm. right? I think the model is kind of pretty similar in the sense that you know you have, you have leads and you come mm. in it's a good model but I strongly believe the why is is wrong in the commercial gym mm. Mm. it's about getting the members in you know keeping them this but the yeah. main reason someone goes to a gym is to be fitter to get healthier yeah. right and they forgot that aspect mm-hmm, mm-hmm. that's the main thing why people want to go to the mm. gym and if you look at the data people uh, that run commercial gyms they make 80% of their income from from people who don't go to the gym yeah mm. right yeah. they don't make money from yeah, the people who come from the gym yeah. they make money from people who buy the one year plan and then come and for three weeks yeah. in new years yeah, yeah. the save cost for I've done that before <laughs> stuff yeah. but those are the numbers right mm-hmm. so we want to do something uh, different in the sense that like you said we want to fill in the gaps right we want to actually give people what they should <coughs> deserve right mm-hmm. a healthy body a mindset that is is on longevity like you said like training uh, exercising living a healthy lifestyle it's something that you should be doing forever mm. not just uh, yeah. you know, on New Year's Eve oh so, yeah so this is where the organic growth comes from like the word of mouth people come to your gym and then they say maybe people who have been in commercial gyms when they come to your gym and then they'll just spread hey this gym is actually you know actually cares about me and stuff like that so you don't try to market it like hey you know we're better than this or no, no. I think at a certain point they don't have to, because word of mouth. But and then but action speaks louder than words. Yeah. You know, so your your reputation probably precedes you guys. Yeah. Correct. But I don't yeah. assume that that took a longer time. Right? Yeah. Exactly. So like I said earlier in the first part, it's it's a long term strategy. Mm-hmm. Like to even give results to a client, it takes time. Right. And people are not attracted to long term yeah, yeah. things now. Yeah. They want people fast. want it quick. Yeah. Yeah. One week fat loss. <laughs> but if you um, <laughs> that's like a one day one too, right? So that's also something that we, we strongly believe in. Like we don't give this kind of promises to clients. We mm. want them to develop a habit that they can keep forever. Yeah. Right. So that's our main intention. And that's a lot more difficult especially when it comes to marketing nobody likes to hear uh, mm. you have to do this for the rest yeah, of your actually, life I actually yeah I, I, or that I, it takes six months to get to your goal yeah. Yeah. six months I never liked that kind of sales that's being done at um, all these commercial gyms because I've been to probably a, a few mm-hmm. and um, <laughs> you know the, I've had this one experience uh, I'm not going to name the, the commercial gym but um, this guy was basically saying because after a while I knew I wasn't, wasn't going to sign up so I'll say oh, thank you very much but he kept on uh, pestering pushing. me yeah he, he kept on pushing and, he, and he, I, I, I think he said this you know he said don't you want to lose that weight I was like what I mean don't you want to lose that mouth yeah <laughs> that's the thing I was talking about I don't blame that guy because the system is built to, that way right? it, yeah. if yeah. you don't that's hit true. your target you're allowed yeah. to you're fired <laughs> you're fired yeah. Yeah, bad things true. will happen mm. to you so they are now desperate to make that number happen mm. yeah. so like I said they have to develop sales skills instead of PT skills yeah. so the PT I, skills yeah. just remain the yeah. same right yeah? actually I initially what, what I what I think is um, the PTs on, in this commercial gyms are not really what I would call PTs, but this is just my impression of them and mm. what um, I understand about fitness and what I see them doing, right? But today, I think I, lo- I learned something new because you're looking at it from the point of view where they need to make sales. So they're forced to so, do so, so they're not actually concentrating on what they're supposed to do. Yeah. Exactly. That could be the, what do you call this? Um, uh, yeah, the reason why mm. I'm thinking this way. W- it will be interesting to see true, or to bring on somebody who is a PT and see their point of view and see how um, how did they see themselves in the mm. industry, you know. Mm. Because Might be a bit biased, but then if we do get a PT that comes on I here. think that will be a great episode. Yeah. Uh, because not all trainers are bad in the commercial, obviously. Yeah. But yeah, good I, yeah. I would definitely say that if you bring on a trainer who has survived in the commercial, commercial gym for a long time... You say the same thing. One is he say the same thing. Mm. Two, he is definitely a great salesperson. Yeah, right. he can speak well. Mm. Yeah, yeah. I think I, I probably because I'm thinking of two 
uh, types of people that I want to bring into to this podcast. One is a personal trainer who trains um, in a commercial, who, who works in a pers- uh, commercial gym. Mm-hmm. The other one is an institution where um, that th- that teaches them, that produces them. Ah. So I want to get those perspective. Okay. You know, that would be interesting. Mm-hmm. Then we can compare with what you guys are saying, and and then mm-hmm. hopefully everybody, ev- everyone is elevated by each other. Yeah, I think oh, yeah. there's something right. we can learn from them. Yeah. And, yeah. Mm-hmm. Because I'm sure they are not bad. I'm uh, sure. I'm I mean, sure they, as well. They want to check my can. Yeah. Right. But <laughs> what I'm saying is the system yeah, is designed system, in that yeah. way, so mm-hmm. you can't blame them. Yeah. I don't blame them at all. I blame them. <laughs> <laughs> How we educate them <coughs> is is through our marketing. Marketing in the sense the stuff that we put out on social media. That's the value. That's the free value. stuff. That's the that's the, the that's the upfront value that we give mm. to them. So you know when you put out something, people are definitely gonna see it. Mm. And if they can relate to what you're talking about, like okay, this guy is different. He's saying that uh, or this 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 team is different. They're saying that uh, fitness is actually a, a long term thing. Like mm. oh, that's not normal. But I know that's true. So you know, let me find out a bit more. Yeah. Mm. Follow. Then it happens like that. It's organic. Okay, it doesn't happen okay, okay. in a day. Like we create, we don't create any kind of of problems, or we just state <laughs> oh, yes. the facts. Oh yes, please don't do that. <laughs> I thought that was funny. Yeah, I think yeah. We, no, spoke about we do address pain points though. Like like losing weight is such an easy thing. Oh yeah, right. But but people until today do not understand the concept of calories. So it's most. I would say most of our content. Did we just sick of saying that but that's mm, the truth you know yeah. people just don't understand yeah but that's the truth right we need to keep on educating but but <coughs> Aris, I think it's, it's easier for them because um, uh, people go to personal trainers people yes. get personal training for, uh, for our our case we are we have to uh, educate people about power lifting about weight strength lifting, training about weight lifting training, yeah. which is something that is a bit more uncommon right yeah. mm-hmm. calories every sort of it like weight training powerlifting sometimes people don't even know the difference mm-hmm. <laughs> right I think everybody doesn't do yeah. it so <laughs> that's why it's, it's a bit harder for us yeah. but, but but again uh, I wouldn't agree to that personal training and strength training in the end everyone is actually doing strength training mm. whenever there's load on even on the body weight itself mm. it's considered as a strength training actually yeah so like what Harris mentioned just now is very, very frustrating as well, which I want to address to that. You know, clients that some of them, they don't really have the exercise experience before, mm-hmm. nor even have a PT or coaching client before, uh, uh, trainers before. So when they come in with uh, ideas of they seeing what we give, so they think that that is the levels of personal training. Oh, so okay. they can't really compare. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. So if you ask them, this, they will tell you whatever we give is a, as a standard baseline. Take mm-hmm. appreciate it, right? Yeah, in a way, yes. So there's some clients that are actually coming from other kind of personal training, even maybe from the commercial gym or studio, they can sort of see a difference. But if they are fresh from the house without any exact experience or going to the gym, you can't really see a difference. Mm-hmm. Okay. But, but that will be easier for you though, because they don't have a point of reference, right? Yes. So that means you're cultivating them right from the, the get-go. Yeah. Yes. As opposed to like uh, sometimes uh, people who come to Faye, uh, they have a certain my understanding of yeah, understanding. So what he has moment. what, what yeah. he has to do is like, no, you fix <clears throat> this, this, this because that understanding most likely yeah. is wrong lah. I mean, Actually, I don't say no anymore. No. I yeah. say like I understand what you're trying to say, yeah. but <laughs> yeah, but this could work the other way as well, right? They might have a bad experience from another yeah. trainer, oh, yeah. and then you come to show yeah. them. Something. Oh, wow. I, that's that's, some, true, that's yeah. something common that I think both of uh, our companies are experiencing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, we get that yeah. a lot actually. Yeah, so that's that's the. Optimistic yeah. side. Of I think that but that's not like our, our main thing to sort of like get these people to compare us because I don't want that. Uh, it's just more of like getting more people to understand that it's actually quite simple to do the right thing, right? Um, I think a lot of it comes down to like more of a personal thing. Like I told you again, like it's always about the person or the people that you're training, not about yourself. Correct. Yeah, and a lot Definitely. of people keep making it. Oh, that, this is me, and I do this, and blah blah blah. I'm like, yeah, okay. It's never that. If they yeah. understood that it was about the other person mm-hmm. in front of you, then you will see a difference. Exactly. Yeah, for sure. Even just by even if you didn't really know that much about strength training or science behind it, if you were uh, actively engaging that person, like uh, that person on an emotional level, right, they will improve. Correct. Because someone's listening to them. Correct. Yeah. But one thing also that I want to, uh, uh, it's also they have to do a certain part, right? Mm-hmm. Like uh, I see people who try this, there's a workout, 
one month later they try another thing and it doesn't work out try and, yeah. Yeah, so you're probably the problem you have to stick <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> right like if you go to a strength coach uh, they'll probably tell you squat's the best you go to uh, if, I mean if you have a let's say you have a back pain right? mm-hmm. they'll tell you squat mm-hmm. you go to a physio they'll tell you to needle or something oh yeah you go to a, a doctor they'll tell you to surgery or stop so everybody has their own different ways of <coughs> things yeah but the, the key here is for the client themselves to pick one and just yeah. do it. Yeah, just yeah, yeah. But but I guess the way you work it yourself, um, it's already it's already like you are trying to filter the, the right people, right? Because you're you're not trying to force your yourselves out there. So you're getting the people who you know actually think about it, think about the things that you're putting out. Oh, then from point. that way you're kind of filtering the right yeah. people, right? Exactly. Mm. So it's like this is what we believe in. This is what we can do to help you. If you like it. Let's work mm. together. We'll do our best. If we mm-hmm. don't, then it's. I think it's better for the both of us. Yeah. Right? Oh yeah. yeah. So you're not like <laughs> something yeah. like what you were saying, but it's filtered in a different way. Mm. Okay, okay. I think what hires means is like you're not just opening up to like every single yeah. person. Mm-hmm. So just come in and try it out. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you're not trying to con- you're trying to like hard convince people. Hey, you need you need this you need this. You're just putting it out there in a way that mm-hmm. if they care about it, then they'll think about it, and then they'll come to you. Right? Mm-hmm. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Like we show them first how we can help them. Like da da da, we have this voice program. Your current this is this. We can help you achieve this this. Our clients have achieved uh, this before. Okay. It's up to the person to make the choice mm. in the end. But this is what we believe in. We're not gonna change our mind. Yeah, like okay, so this yeah. doesn't work. We're gonna try something. Yeah. Okay. Did you get your answer, Harris? Yeah. So we should we shouldn't have the three focus down. We don't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You can trust yourself. Man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. This is reaffirming my. <laughs> Bring in the clients there. He's gonna need a waiting list too. Yeah. <laughs> oh yes. <laughs> yeah, we have our own sets of challenges, uh, yeah, okay. which is fun. <coughs> yeah. Uh, anyway, I think we've gone quite long. Yeah, quite long. Really? One one and a half hours as well. Oh. Probably just cut short the wow. f- yes. intro part. That Almost a few. Uh, okay. no, yeah. no, 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 no. These never do. Um, but I think that's the problem. Like a lot of people, they see it and they're like, "Oh, it's an hour and a half. Oh, I'm not gonna listen." <laughs> yeah. Probably they, they probably don't won't wa- watch it uh, uh, wait <laughs> to the, the end. end, right? Which is fine. The content is there, and mm-hmm. for anybody who wants to refer available. to it, they can they can just go to mm-hmm. our Ready YouTube channel. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, but if you guys want to put more effort, maybe you can try to snap it or snip it on certain area. Yeah, we do. Oh, that's yeah. what we do. Yeah, we do. Yeah, yeah. We have like those previews, and like you can see different, more I would say uh, interesting parts, and then you just stick it up in there. Right? Mm. Yeah, then people yeah. watch it. Yeah, that's cool. All right. Um, f- any last words? Um, where can any people words, where words. can people find you? Um, uh, not words. after this podcast. <laughs> <We're> not, uh, <laughs> no, I just want to say uh, thank you guys for having us. It's been a pleasure. I truly mm. enjoyed this conversation. Genuinely, it's a great one. Oh. So thank you guys so much. Handshake. 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 Shake. <laughs> shake. Thank yes. you guys. Shake it. Handshake right. over the mics. All right, man. Uh, man, we've never done. A finger oh. touch. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> Where you can find us, I think just Google KD Trainer. Oh, you're that KD famous. Trainer. Uh, yeah. I mean, there's only one. <laughs> <laughs> so on Facebook, kdtrainer.com. Uh, Instagram, it's KD <clears throat> underscore trainer. Uh, YouTube, you can get links all over. And we'll, uh, do, we'll do the same for you guys. We'll put... Uh, this yeah, sure. Stuff. Okay. So yeah, thank you. People in Penang, if you guys want to get some high quality equipment, right? And yeah. Check. This is this this is the guy. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. thank you so much. Yeah, we'll put your uh, descri- links in uh, the, our description. So anyway, uh, thank you guys for coming all the way to Bukit Jelutong. Wow. <laughs> That's where we're at. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, you see how much cooler that will sound if you're like, thank you guys for coming all the way to Bangsar. <laughs> mm, <right>. Yes. <laughs> mm. <Doesn't> show <laughs> me the money. Julutong is good. We have a Julutong back home as well. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, mm. yeah, yeah, yeah I know. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. So, anyways, guys, um, that's that's it <coughs> for for this week. Uh, right. We'll see you again in the next episode, inshallah. All right. Bye-bye. See ya. Hi. If you're interested to be on the podcast. Send an email to info at zilfit.com.my Alternatively, you can just give me a call at 012-2361 We can talk about anything If you want to promote your products If you want to promote yourself Bring it on See you on the show Hey guys, thanks for watching the video Don't forget to subscribe and turn the notifications on If you like the video, hit the like button and leave a comment 
We're also on Spotify, Instagram, and Facebook. The links are in the description. See you guys in the next episode. Bye.